And we are live all across Northwest Ohio here on WOSN in a big matchup. As it's hard to believe, it's already to the halfway point of the high school football season. A couple of undefeated set to do battle here in the NWOAL as the Archibald Blue Streaks have come to Liberty Center to face the Tigers. Hello again, everyone, with Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. We are here at Kip Kern Field in Rex Lindgren Tiger Stadium. And partner, what a big one we've got tonight. A couple of undefeateds trying to figure out who is going to take control of the NWOAL. Now, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Biggest game in Northwest Ohio, biggest game in the NWOAL this year. And I get to spend time with the mayor of Northwest Ohio, Randy Roberts, enjoying high school football. And folks, we are not on rec time in prison on break right here. We're in the stands. This is the fence right behind us. So we are going to have a great sight line here right in the stands and all these Tiger fans surrounding us. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere. Looking forward to what should be a good matchup. 67th all time between these two. They know each other, Miles. That uh, this, this is going to feel like NFC North rivals. Mm -hmm. Sixth time these two are going to meet in the last four years. Yeah, nothing like a little dislike to make the game interesting, huh? Our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Liberty Center and Archibald is the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. All right, Miles, let's get uh, into the lineups. Let's start with the undefeated Blue Streaks of Archibald, 4-0, number nine in the latest AP poll, number six in the uh, computer points poll, which determines seating for the playoffs. And a lot of question marks for a team that's undefeated uh, they do have four wins, like we said, but uh, we don't really know how good this team is yet. Yeah, good point by you. It, but one thing that's been a pleasant surprise, remember DJ Newman? Remember that he kind of was kind of good, right? He was there he, he about was. He was like 10 years or quarterback, it seemed like. And he moved on to Bowling Green State University, and they wondered who's going to be quarterback. Well, Kate Brenner has stepped in. The junior has done a really good job. 6'1", 160 pounds. Randy, he is completing 68% of his passes. Mm -hmm. He's already thrown for six TDs, three interceptions. Has turned the ball over a little bit, dropping it uh, with fumbles, but he's been really capable. But you really got to look at the guy that dominates their offense. That's Carson Dominic at running back, number 25. Randy, he's got 85 carries this year. The rest of the team, 45. So when 25 is in the backfield, pretty good guess that he's going to get it. And why not? Averages 6.8 yards a carry. He is a good one. 577 yards and 11 TDs already. It is a really good offense, like always, that they have at Archibald. Hey, do the math. It's about 144 yards a game, like you said. But DJ Newman was a pretty – you had a good idea of what the Blue Streaks were going to yeah. do offensively yeah, the last guy. three and a half years. It's changed this year. They've gone to that new uh, guy with Dominic. And it's paid off for him so far. Yeah, DJ Newman, his whole room was like awards that we've given him from TV 26, right? He was like our player of the game in basketball, football, mm -hmm. baseball, all the time. Such a great guy. But Kate Brenner is a capable guy at uh, quarterback. They moved the pocket with him. Very similar style what they used to run with DJ Newman. It's going to be a spread look. On defense, they might get some good news back as well, uh, Randy. Uh, number 28, Devin Morris, who's been out with an ankle injury, a senior who was an all NWA player a year ago go on the defensive line, he's going to give it a go tonight. So if he could play, give them some quality minutes, that defense is going to be really good because guys like Gabe Chapa and Steven Diller, those guys come up and hit, and they're going to have to hit a big wave because, as we know, Liberty Center, they can run the football. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that Blue Streak defense. You mentioned a couple of names, Gabe Chapa and uh, Josiah Gomez, also another one of those guys, and Diller. So this is uh, kind of a, a back seven that uh, really kind of carries this team. Yeah, Chapa, unbelievable. 38 tackles, three tackles for loss. It is a team tonight, though, that defensive coordinator Jack Downey, he's got a really good scheme. They're going to move around a little bit, try to confuse that offensive line. They don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big fellas at Liberty Center. All right, let's talk a little bit about Liberty Center. They come in also 4-0, and picked up uh, a win to begin NWOA play a week ago, a game we were at. We saw them win in Wauseon 40-6, to and... Uh, no surprise, anyone who knows Liberty Center football, head coach Casey Muller, it's a, a ground and pound attack. Matthew Orr, little dinged up last week against Liberty, expect him to go tonight. They've got some uh, 
some guys that can go. By the way, it's a Liberty team that's been running for 276 yards a game. Yeah, good news, Matt Orr, who, he was on the ground for an extended period of time against Wasian. He was a full participant at practice this week, so he's good to go, and that's a big step in the right direction because he has over 400 yards rushing and averages 8.2 yards per carry. And uh, he's going to be complimented by Colton Cruz, who has 314 yards, 6.8 yards per carry. And but how good is Zane Zider, though? From a year ago where we saw them to mm -hmm. now, that guy might be the most improved player in Northwest Ohio. Easily the most impressive performance that we've seen early in the year last week against Wasian. 254 yards rushing this year, 267. He is a dual threat. And it seems like every time they make a, need a play, he makes one for that offense. Liberty Center, by the way, comes in number five in the latest AP poll. Also the top computer-ranked team, which again, uh, only means one thing ultimately when we get to the end of the year, and that's determining your seeding when we go into the postseason as uh, top 16 in each region will advance. So the Tigers, again, uh, shut out to Nora, beat Napoleon and Otsego. So uh, uh, I guess a few less question marks than maybe Archibald does. Yeah, I, 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 we were talking before the game. If you, you look at the two teams, Liberty Center from a year ago at this spot, much improved, right? Mm -hmm. Archbold from a year ago at this spot, they look like they are going to be okay, right? But would you say that they're as good or better than they were a year ago? Well, we don't know. That's a question mark we're going to find out tonight. This is a huge test for Archbold. Liberty Center, they're primed to go. And one number that sticks out for the Liberty Center defense, putting some uh, numbers together, this is a team that allows just 1.42 yards per carry facing, as we said, the best running back in the NWOAL, Carson Dominic. Yeah, they got two big giant blocks of granite in the middle, right? Owen Box and Landon Bockelman. They power clean 290 and 260. Those are strong guys. It's tough to run against them. And you talked uh, about Box, 16 tackles, three sacks. But the secondary for the uh, Liberty Center Tigers, Landon Cruz, three INTs, Zyder with a couple. So let's say Archibald decides they want to throw the football tonight. There's uh, some pretty good DBs back there in that uh, back group for Liberty Center. Now, wait a minute. Before we move on, you said Owen Box, three sacks, right? Mm -hmm. I'm still lobbying for him. Remember, he, he drew three holding penalties a week ago against Wasi. On. Count those with sacks because he would have got them. Should be six. But you're right, partner. The secondary very much improved from a year ago. And I will say even in the playoff game that these two teams played, that secondary was much better than early in the season when Archibald threw all over them. Getting set for what should be a good one. Undefeated Archibald, undefeated Liberty Center. We'll have it for you here at WSN. Ray Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here at Kip Kern Field, Rex Lindgren Tiger Stadium as we inch closer to the opening kickoff, this uh, big matchup between state-ranked unbeaten teams in the NWOAL. As we said, this meeting, the 67th overall between these two. Liberty Center leads the all-time series 34, 31, and one split a pair of meetings last year. Archibald dominated the regular season matchup. And you remember, Miles, it was Liberty. Archibald mm -hmm. fumbled that opening kick. Liberty went in and scored, and, and uh, everyone was kind of surprised because Archibald was just absolutely steamrolling teams up to that point. The streaks continued it as they got a 41-7 win, then in a great playoff game, great atmosphere in defiance. It was the Tigers had knocked off the streaks in the playoffs. 38-35 marked the uh, second time in the last three years that these two had met twice. 2019 also met in uh, the uh, regular season and playoffs. It was a reversal as uh, the Tigers won the regular season matchup. The playoff game went to Archibald 31-30. Remember that game, uh, the Tigers went for two went and for missed two. it. Ran the uh, Super Bowl special that the Philadelphia Eagles ran to beat the uh, Patriots. Did not work for them that night. Uh, two great football games, games that we had uh, here in our coverage area. Fantastic battles, and we're promised to have another good one. Well, Miles, let's get to our state bank checks of the game for this one. Let's start with a visiting Archibald Blue Street. Yeah, fuel up that diesel, right? Carson Dominic, the diesel truck. Give him the football, Randy. I think if he carries the ball over 25 times a night, Archibald wins this football game. Number two, mix it up on the defensive line. Jack Downing, defensive coordinator. If he stays in one look, it's going to be easy for Liberty Center to dissect it and get the big guys on it and block it. So mix it up front. And number three, LOS. What does LOS stand for? Well, that's the line of scrimmage. David Dominic, head coach of the Blue Streaks, all week long has said they have to win the battle of the line of scrimmage. That's a tough task. 
because of the big fellows that Liberty Center has up front. And how about some uh, State Bank checks for the Liberty Center Tigers? Number one, B sensational. The sensational one, Zane Zider. He has been fantastic for this offense for Liberty Center. The quarterback makes moves with his feet, makes big plays with his arm. Keep being sensational. Number two, the Big B lineup. Randy, I hope we see this. They practice at, pro at practice. They moved Landon Bockelman over on the side of Owen Box. They put the two big tackles next to each other in an over formation. That's a lot of weight on one side, and they ran behind it. So if they break out the Big B lineup, watch out, Archbold. And number three, lead, don't chase. The playoff game a year ago, they got the lead. Mm -hmm. They played in front, dictated terms. But in the regular season, Archbold got the lead. They threw the ball all over the field, got Liberty Center behind. They had to throw the football. Be the lead dog. Go out in front, get the lead, and dictate terms if you're Liberty Center. You see the kick units for uh, both teams out there. I want to tell you that uh, our sponsor for our pregame show has been the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, skilled objective and caring financial planners. Miles, one thing we really didn't talk a whole lot about, and a couple of gentlemen that might uh, affect this game, the head coaches, the uh, dice rollers that they are, if you will. David Dominic, who, by the way, picked up his 60th career win last week as the Blue Streaks knocked off uh, Brian. And we mentioned Casey Moeller now in his sixth year as the Tigers, the opening kick, send this end over end inside the 10 yard line. It will be fielded by Nathan Juarez and not a whole lot of running room there. It looks like Archibald's gonna begin at the 20 yard line. Well, it's a high kick. Great kick just inside of the 10. But it hung in the air, allowed that uh, coverage team to get down there and get the big first thump. Streaks will start at the 20, just underway here. What uh, is expected to be, and we can tell, is a large crowd. Always is here in Liberty Center, but uh, see them about three deep in the end zone. First play pass going to the far sideline. That is going to be caught. Throw out to, I believe that was Dane Riley. Was that number 10? That's Bainfeld, Bainfeld outside 16. big target. Yeah, a quick little hitch. I like it. Get your quarterback settled down early. Get your best receiver who has 14 catches on the year. Get him another one. But the thing that's impressive is a year ago, that'd be extra yardage. Not this year. Liberty Stern came out and tackled right away. Gave him about five. Second and five. There's the first give. Carson Dominic, a little cutback. He's able to get out near first down yardage. Well, that's going to bode well for Archbold. First run play of the afternoon. Get a little bit of push on the play side with the vision of the big diesel truck. He's able to make a cutback, get a first down. And it is a Swanton Welding first down. First, first down downs tonight brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Yeah, four receivers to this side. Liberty Center, late adjustment. Quick throw over the middle is Dominic, who, uh, by the way, third on the team in receptions as well, and another gain of about five. Yeah, smart play, just right, uh, like a little pop pass. Go four to a side, nobody over top the inside slot, take the free yards, or comes over and makes the tackle, but not before Dominic makes the catch and gets five yards. See our uh, instant replay there tonight. Our instant replay is brought to you by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Design run here on second and five. Now a flag coming in at the end of this one. It is first down yardage as Jack Hurst came in at quarterback. We saw this. Uh, Miles, the only chance we've had to see the Archibald was a uh, scrimmage against Eastwood. Yeah, you're gonna see the hold right there. They're gonna get Siegel working on Matt Orr. The linebacker, number 35, trying to scrape over top, and they're going to say his hand got outside. A little creative blocking gets caught by the official, and they're going to walk it back. That's a huge call early in this football game. So it'll be 10 yards from the infraction. So that will back up the blue streaks to a second and a fairly long. Well, Archibald found something that they like in film study, that four receivers to a side. Last two formations, or last two snaps in that formation, Liberty Center late to adjust to it. Second and 17 coming up here for the Blue Streaks. Brenner rolling out far side. Has a man, but he's going to throw that one out of bounds, looking for Carter Bainfeld. Yeah, great coverage by Liberty Center. Everybody in the secondary had their eyeballs on the quarterback. Nobody was open. 
And how about this smart decision by the junior quarterback? Doesn't try to force a throw. The smartly throws it away when no one is open. So brings up third down. Might be a uh, pass down here at third and 17. Wondered how much we'd see Carson Dominic try to get the ball against this defense of Liberty Center. Three man front now, one of the linemen will jump. We'll see whether or not he was goaded into it by the defensive lineman as there was uh, all sorts of movement up front. Yeah, it's gonna be against Archbold. Dominic moved from the slot also. And they're gonna say that Wyatt Ripke moved at left tackle. Now the good news, Randy, is even if two guys moved, it's only five yards. So you don't add them together? <laughs> It'd be horrible, wouldn't it? Two guys move, 10 yards. I don't know if this really changes your, your play calling between third and 17 and third and 22. That's where the blue streaks are at with a four receiver set. Brenner again looking to that far side. There's plenty of time, rolls out. Trying to make something happen. He'll get rid of the football. That one's going to be incomplete down that far sideline. And he tried to run an out and up on the inside slot. Kind of a wheel combination to the play side. But Liberty Center using the down box to their advantage. Huge third down. They just played in front of everybody. Kept backpedaling. Nobody was open. With a secondary for Liberty Center. Might be the most improved part of this team from a year ago. Put team on the field now for Archibald. So that first call, first drive. Brought to you today by KK Collision. KK Collision, your first call for automotive body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. Chapa, the deep man, one of the deep men for Liberty. This one's going to jump up, get him right in the bread basket, about the 35-yard line, try to get a little running room. He'll get to the 40, but a nice open field tackle made there for the Blue Streaks as Evan Went, a uh, sophomore defensive back, comes up with a stop. Well, a smart move by Evan. He went for the ankles of Choppa, got him to the ground. I see what you did there. Good field position for the Tigers. They'll start at their own 41. See on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard, 934 left to go in our opening quarter. Yeah, that opening drive by Archbold on offense shows you how tough it is to overcome a penalty, especially a hold one, 15 yards. They had things cooking, but got slowed down in a hurry. Yeah, the hold there gives to the first man through for the Tigers. Simple football and first down, they'll pick up a couple of yards. Yeah, Lance Bauer, number 45. The small defensive two, tackle for Archbold, he can get off the football in a big way. Good thing, because he made the tackle after the dive, and there's number 28, Devin Morris, in the ball game for Archbold. He's been nursing a bad ankle. This is the first extended playing time. If he can go, what a huge, huge bonus for Archbold. Colton Cruz got that call in first down and pick up three. It's going to be second and seven. Ball fakes to Orr. Now Zider take off and runs. Got plenty of running room. He's across the midfield stripe, and he'll very smartly step out of bounds. And that will be a swat welding first down for the Tigers. A great block by Navarre on the play side to squeeze the defensive end in. Zider's first read is covered. So let your feet do the work. The sensational one using his feet to get it done. First down will get into Blue Streak territory at the Archibald 43. Did you see the big hit by Devin Morris out there on Colton Chambers? Mm -hmm. Chambers kind of looking around at the end of the play, and Devin Morris said, no, not in this game. No tiptoes through the tulips in this one. Tigers are now flip the formation. Strong side moves to the right side. They're going to run that way. Back to Cruz. Slipped a little bit on the turf. He's going to run into one of his own linemen, and he's going to get pushed back, and then he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Well, he went to that heavy formation that we talked about, right? To me, if you're going to run that, you got to go quick. And they kind of took their time, so allowed Archbold to figure it out. They adjusted quickly, and Stephen Diller, number nine, flew up on the outside, squeezed it in. First down victory for Archbold's defense. No gain on the play. Bring up second and ten. Tigers have already taken a little bit uh, over a minute off the clock. Zider now under center. has got the wing back to the left side. You see there. Split backs, here's Orr's first carry straight ahead. He's going to beat another semi-truck. Big collision right at the 40-yard line. I see 
Buckle Man and Box right next to each other. That's a lot of beef. Look at them winning their battles. But the backside is able to get there and help and stop the run before it got big yardage. Third down now. You gotta believe, right? The way Casey Muller likes to call the game, if they get close here on fourth down, this is gonna be a go-go situation. Yeah, I believe it's Devin Morris in the bottom of the pile came up with a stop there. So third and seven from the 40. Four receivers. A little fake, a little miscommunication of what was gonna run here. That pass nearly intercepted as Chase Miller, who's got a handful of picks this year, was thinking about six the other way. Yeah, this was an RPO type of thing. They're gonna fake it to the inside and then come back. And that, this was not well conceived because Chase Miller, oh, if he would've got his hands on that, the Archbold band would be playing as he is scoring in the end zone. Again, our instant replays tonight brought to you by the Wright Set State the University the Lake Tigers Campus. Max Walker on to do the punting for the Tigers, stands back at his own 47 yard line. Chase Miller, the deep man for the Blue Streaks at about his own 10. And this one will take a bounce and it looks like waiting for the officials to call this one. That one might have gone out of bounds at about the two, and that's where they're going to mark it. Great play by the Tigers special teams. Nice. Shades of the 1980s with the punt game. Coffin corner. How about that? Great punt. Back in Archbold all the way up into the orange turf. Well, the officials will give the uh, crew a moment here. Bring the chains all the way down. Yeah, they're going to say that actually it was inside the one yard line. Do you say it's the .5 or the half? What do you, what do you go it's with? It's the half. The half, the yard, half line? yard line? The which half is, yard line. I love the half yard line, but there's no line for the half yard. The 1.5 foot? Yeah, I, something like that. Yeah. How do you have .5 of a foot? <laughs> I guess the Saints had a kicker that had .5 of a foot. Dempsey, 63 yard field goal against the Lions. So running out of their end zone, this one is going to be troublesome as the Blue Streaks do everything they can just to avoid the safety on the first down run. Uh, tremendous run by, by the diesel. Carson Dominic just to get out of his own end because he is met in the orange turf. It was Cruz that met him first, but that little spin move got him into positive yardage. We'll say no gain, second and 10 from the one yard line. Great shot of all the Liberty Center fans lining the end zone. There is not a place to be seen for a seat. They are in folding chairs about three deep. They always are, but they are geared up with a big crowd, a little crowd to the backfield, and it looks like the Tigers are gonna score the first points of the game. No signal yet. Oh, the he officials gonna got say out. that barely got out of the end zone. We'll take a look here, let you decide. It looked as if it was going to be a handoff to Dominic, but the snap was low. Brenner just barely, boy, throw the flag, Coach Moeller, because I think that's a safety. That ball doesn't make it out until Brenner is fully on the ground. And that is the closest to a safety you could ever be. Nose of the football just outside the goal line. Great work from our camera crew. Third and 11 coming up for the Blue Streaks. Brenner rolling out, looking to throw under pressure. Now we'll have one here as the flag will come out for the intentional grounding. That's a tough ask, right? You're going to run to the left-hand side of the quarterback with only a one-man route. You see Miller outside. Should have thrown it away there, but I think his thought press was, was or was going to knock it out of his hand if he tried to throw it. And you can dance if you want to. You can leave yourself behind because it's a safety dance. At, at this point, is this where I'm obligated for the dun, 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 That's right. Spell it out, baby. And they know the safety down there in the Liberty Center end zone. 2-0. Two Liberty, Liberty Center with the early lead. But you think it's one of the first things that they teach kids in elementary school, right? The signals for football. Second grade, teacher puts her hands over the head. What is this one, Billy? That's a safety. Yes, sir. So 2 nothing in our Northwest State Community College scoreboard, or again, our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Northwest State Community College. Get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. We'll take a break. Liberty Center strikes first here on WOSN. 2 nothing. our score. The uh, safety, the Liberty Center defense got the... Uh, 
quick stop on the first drive, helped out by the penalties, and then after the punt, backed up the blue streaks inside the one. Defense did the rest there. Uh, take a look at this unbalanced line that Liberty Center featured last position, possession. You see the T and the T. That's uh, Box and Bachman right next to each other. And what they do is they try to fool the defense because Box will look like a tight end to the right-hand side, and they put the tight end on the back side, make it look like he's the tackle, try to fool him. That's Hammond Tree on the back side. But anytime you get Bachman and Box, that is a lot of guys pushing. A lot of weight behind that. And we now have uh, an officials caucus here uh, as I think they're arguing who gets the right to determine which kind of kickoff we'll have here. Well, you can kick it from a tee or you can punt it on a free kick after a safety. Well, I think the question is which team gets to decide that. Is it the one kicking or the one that scored the points? Well, to me, it's always been the team kicking. You can choose, but Coach Dominic is uh, – Oh, he, he's arguing about a hold penalty. He's saying that his receiver was held. Look, he's got the rule book even. I'll tell you what, nothing well, upsets that, a, an official more, though, than when you bring out the rule book. That came into play, is it in the playoffs last year? It's Creighton Curran, one of the better kickers in Northwest Ohio, has this ball teed up. So an unbelievable soccer player for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, I think they had a, a soccer match last night, didn't they? He was no, at practice yesterday? Tuesday, they, Tuesday they had. Oh, they had on Tuesday, yep. okay. High end over end kick. This one is still going to get fairly deep at about the 25, where it will be fielded here. Good return out across the 40. Gabe Chapa will uh, get the return there. Now watch Juarez. Juarez. Sorry, Riley Chapa. Juarez. Watch Juarez, number six. Keep outside contain, break down, make the tackle. Diller blew up his guy, comes and helps as well. And this has got to be a huge stand in this football game for Archbold. They cannot let Liberty Center march this down and take command of the game early. Tigers started their own 44. I want to tell you that our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Liberty Center and Archbold is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Shotgun out of the Tigers. Design run the entire way. Zyder will get just shy of midfield. Good run. Now, Urban Meyer always says quarterback runs are so tough to defend because you can't account for them man to man. And you see it right there. This have it outnumbered. A direct snap to Zyder. You bring Navarre around on a, a pull on and make the ten, uh, lead block. Mason Siegel, number 70, does a good job just getting enough to get Zyder to the ground. Gain of five will bring him second and five just shy. Of the 49, you see the big Tiger logo at midfield. You got to see that before the game. I did. Yeah, Randy Roberts got out there in the middle. We got a nice photo of him. Full house backfield, interesting look here. Yeah, look at all that beef. Box and Bockelman in front. They're the lead blockers for Zyder going straight ahead. Arch will not fool. They'll limit him to about a yard. And we'll have third down coming from midfield. Yeah, kind of the old Tim Tebow formation, right? Load up in Number front 10, of him, let the big guy Zyder run. Problem was it didn't fool anybody. Dominic blitzes, makes a play in the backfield. Third and four coming up here as we continue to roll fast moving opening quarter down to four and a half minutes to go. Sun went down in a hurry. It's become a very comfortable night. It was hot down on the turf. Our crew arrived here at about 5.15 this afternoon. Third down run, they're going to go to Orr. It looked like he had the momentum at first miles, and someone's going to grab him by the ankles, throw him down, and the Tigers are going to be about two yards short, and the punt team will make its way under the field. A little surprise, they're going to punt the football here. Thought might be a moment. Casey Muller puts his stamp on the game and go for it, but it was Carson Dominic. Read the fact that Orr was showing his side, filled his gap in a hurry, got some help from Mason Siegel. Siegel. He showed up early in this football game. Now, like we said a week ago when we saw these uh, Tigers play, normal punter Landon Amstutz out with an injury. Doesn't look like that's going to bother now. Frayer catch made as uh, Chase Miller didn't want his team backed up to the one-yard line again. And Miller, great job of showing some athletic ability on the back pedal. Looked like it was going to be problems for him after the fair catch, but he's got those nice feet. Just moved back a couple steps and caught it. Fair catch made at the 13-yard line. So the Blue Streaks will take over third offensive possession of the night. They're going empty. 
trying to spread that Liberty Center defense thin. Man will go in motion. They'll try to throw to him. It's Dominic. Manages to hold on to the football. Looks like he was juggling that a little bit. He'll pick up about three, four yards out across the 15-yard line. Yeah, big fella. Not just between the tackles kind of player. Look at the soft hands outside and the quick feet. Gain of three, second down and seven. It's a gain three. Good block by Jack Hurst outside to spring him free. Second down coming up for the Blue Streaks. They'll huddle. They've done a lot more huddling this year than we've seen in years past. It's been a lot of... Uh, get to the line and go for the Blue Streaks the last three seasons. Well, they have that still in their offense, but they try to control tempo in many different ways. Quick throw again, rolling out this time the far east side, and that one's going to be incomplete as Bainfeld was separated from the football quickly. Yeah, Zacharias flies up quickly. Second time they run the hitch to his side. Zacharias that time makes a tackle and brings the right arm through, knocking the ball out of Benfeld's hands. Bring up a third and seven here. Zacharias was a guy that showed up a week ago against mm -hmm. Rossian, had himself a heck of a day. Huge third down early in this football game for Archibald. Brenner in a shotgun, gets the snap. He's going to throw his receiver, slips down, pass is going to be incomplete, looking again for Chase Miller with Choppa covering. Trying to get one-on-one -on -one with Miller on Choppa. Chapa does bail. It's going to be there on an outbreaking route. But Miller plants on the inside foot. You got to plant on the outside foot. Make your cut. Timing was thrown off because of the slip. And very fortunate Chapa two, didn't make the catch and run it in for a touchdown. The third time tonight that the uh, punt team has made their way back onto the field. Snap's going to one-hop the punter. Curran able to get this one off. Fair catch is going to be made at the 49-yard line, and that is where the Tigers will take over. Well, it's almost like that last series just should have disappeared because we're back to where we were a moment ago. Trading field position again. You just keep taking that sledgehammer to the rock. Eventually, the rock will break. I guess that's the game plan of... Coach Moeller, knowing that his offensive line eventually is going to get some push against this really good front seven of Archibald. Tigers take over just shy of midfield. Zyder in the shotgun. has got a single receiver each way. Looking to throw. He's got a man open. Pass is going to complete as he comes to the near sideline. Caught by Landon Cruz. That's yeah, just Landon a mere Cruz. route to one side. Sees that Hurst jumps underneath it. Comes back this he side in a hurry. Boy, and he puts four. it on a dime. Six yard gain, so it's going to bring him second and four from the 45 yard line. With the bowlers who qualified for the state bowling tournament, please report. You got man coverage down here. Look how close the safeties for Archbold are playing. About eight to seven yards away from the line of scrimmage. Zyder will give, now we'll get whistles, and it looks like a flag thrown the far sideline. That's going to be a false start against Liberty Center. Now, partner, if Archibald's going to commit those safeties that close to the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. at some point in time, Zyder's going to have to reuse some play action and hit a seven route or a post route behind it. You're going to have that one-on-one -on -one look. Again, you should take advantage of it and take a shot. The east end zone. Penalty backs the Tigers to midfield for second and nine. So Cruz go in motion. Handoff's going to be the box. Archibald read that one. There's going to be no gain on the play. That's going to be David Oregon. He is big as the whole state. Flying in there, taking away a gap. Boy, Archibald stopping inside trap. If you can stop inside trap against a Liberty Center football team, it goes a long way in winning because that is the first thing that they install. They love to run trap. You don't stop it. Remember the playoff game last year? Mm -hmm. You don't stop it. They're going to keep running it. Third nine coming up here for Liberty Center from midfield. Zyder. Back in his shotgun, he's got three receivers. It's all gonna be window dressing as he runs here. He's got room up the middle. 
Trying to bust to the outside. He's got a first down and more to the 35. Finally going to be taken out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Well, we talked about his ability to make plays when they need it. Yet another big third down conversion. It's going to be quarterback counter. Gets a good block by Lay, number 51. And has the little shiftiness that you need to get extra yardage. The quarterback converts another big third down. Yeah, another Swanton Welding first down for the Tigers. Again, our first downs tonight brought to you by Swanton Welding, the Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. First down from the 33, a big run out of Zyder, converting on the Oh, he's got Second him. down, has the man downfield open, and that's going to go for a Tiger touchdown. That's Hammond Tree on the seven route. Play action fake. We talked about a couple plays before. Inside fake to Orr. Zider surveys the field. Great protection. Hammond Tree on the seven route is all by himself. Miller comes over from corner, tries to get there. And that's a tough catch because you're all by yourself looking over the shoulder. Hammond Tree, nice job. There's a KK Collision touchdown. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by KK Collision. Your first call for automotive body mechanical shop and light and heavy duty towing. Extra point will be good as well as Ian Rosebrook knocks that through. Nine nothing Tigers here late in the opening quarter. 9-0 our score. Liberty Center with a lead over Archibald and Miles. You had called it. The Tigers were at midfield. You saw the defensive backs for Archibald cheating up, cheating up. Said they are going to get hit over the top, and that's exactly what happened, that big touchdown pass. Well, Archibald's going to have to answer, and one of the ways they can answer is one of their favorite things to do is to empty the backfield, right? And when you empty the backfield, that's what the formation looks like. It's only the quarterback by himself. You're going to try and spread the field Make that Liberty Center team defend sideline to sideline, give you some space. I think that you're going to see a lot of that moving forward to get Kate Brenner easy looks. Max Walker's got the ball teed up for the Tigers here. Step into this one. Good kick. One will be taken at about the five yard line. Miles, you're going to get yourself a free t shirt. Sure did. One will come out to about the 20. Look at, look at all these Liberty Center people staring at me like I'm going to keep this thing. I'm going to put it on camera, and then I'm going to give it to this little guy right here. This is what here we go. just came up there. Here we go. Here you go, buddy. That's for you. Yeah. You're welcome. And I'm going to give you the rubber band. Oh, yeah. my favorite part. First down for the streaks here as we uh, close in. On the opening quarter, Dominic trying to get to the outside. He can't outrun six black shirts, and that's going to go for a loss. Uh, it's got to make you excited if you're Matt Bryan, the defensive corner at Liberty Center. That's Tanner Klein flying over there, making the tackle. But like you said, partner, about six black jerseys, they are flying to the football. Second 11 coming up here for Archibald. They'll have to take at least one more snap here. See the difference of about five seconds between the game clock and the play clock. Brenner in a shotgun alone in the backfield, gets the snap. Looks that far side, had Miller open momentarily, looking to throw again. And Miller get his hands on it, but he's going to be out of bounds. It's incomplete. Now, if you're going to make a quarterback run out of the pocket, make him flush to the left, right? Tough to throw. Smart move by Brenner, though. Better get rid of him before Box gets you. He'll eat you alive. Just runs out of real estate. Good effort trying to come down with it by Chase Miller, but ran out of real estate. Third and 11 coming up here for the Blue Streaks. They have not been able to get out of the shadow of their own goal line. What do you think Brenner was thinking when Box is chasing him down? Got to be throw the get, get away, right? Throw the football. Don't how do, hit me. How do I stay alive? What do you go to the quick throw? Nothing open there. And a big sack. As Owen Box come up with another one. No now, question about that one, partner. That's a sack. Now, I think this is going to be a screen, but he can't get the ball out because of how fast Box gets on him. He boxed him up in a big way. And by my tally, that's like six number eight. Sack, sack, that's sack number eight on the year for Owen Box. It's also the end of the opening quarter. All Tigers so far here from Liberty Center. A big sack. The end of the opening quarter is back the Archibald Blue Streaks even deeper 
into their own territory. You see there on your screen, the scoreboard, fourth and 22 will mean a punt from its own end zone by Kern, the second one. That's one hopped his way back to Kern, still able to get a bullet. That's gonna get over everyone's head and take an Archibald roll. And that will be downed back at about the 32, 33 yard line. Partner, that feels about the worst mm. field position for the Tigers this evening. It went from, oh Lord, what is going on? Because a snap back to Kern if you're an Archbold fan. And then, oh, it's nice to have a good punter. What a great kick by Kern. One of those moments where you're going to talk to your return guy, Choppa, come up and catch that, right? Save us 20 yards in field position. About the only thing that Liberty Center has done wrong tonight. So Liberty Center will take over at about the 32-33 uh, yard line, and they had an announcement. Miles helped out with this. Did I understand the announcement correctly, the bake sale? Has right now about eleven hundred dollars. The competing bake sales. <laughs> yes, there's, there's more than one game going on here inside <laughs> Kip Kern Field tonight. Uh, hard to believe that when two fat guys show up to a football field, they run over the bake sale it's right amazing. away. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a pop up, a little pop up bake sale. We got there and we found out it's a competition. Archbold selling baked goods and Liberty Center baked goods. And uh, we we were smart. We bought from both booths. What's this? We only one of us reached <laughs> deep into his pockets. You benefited. I gave you one of the cookies. There's a penalty going to be marched off against uh, Liberty Center. But eleven hundred dollars. That's a lot of uh, new diabetics contributing right there. Fantastic. This penalty has the Tigers backed up now to their own uh, twenty-two. Well, what a change in field position after that punt. Also wondered about the 50 50. I'm sure those sales are doing extremely well. Well, double handoff going inside as Liberty Center trying to get a little creative. Ball, heads, uh, ball ends up in the hands of Colton Chambers. Now the old we'll pick up a couple of yards. Little bubble play on the uh, wing T vernacular inside handoff. And they went to it because Archbold is slanting towards that heavy side. They had three defensive linemen committed to that side. They thought the weak side would be open. But Riley Chapa or Gabe Chapa rather, makes a great play at linebacker. Too many Chapas going on out here. Second down coming up here. And a good hole opening up, trying to bounce to the outside, Chambers. Finally, he's gonna be brought down shy of the 30 yard line as the Diesel, by the way, plays a little bit of defense as well. Yeah, you're gonna see him scrape over top from his linebacker position. Good thing he did because Diller misses the tackle. If Dominic's not there, that turns into a bigger run by Chambers. A little bit of shiftiness by Chambers makes it a workable third down for Liberty Center. Third and three coming up here. And there's that heavy formation again. The B-Boys on the right-hand side. We get the quick pitch, going to Orr, trying to run over some bodies. Looking for that Swan Welding first down, and it looks like he may be just a little short. And a fullback toss to the right-hand side. It is punished on the outside. That's Dominic that blows up the inside block. And then Kern comes up, makes a tackle, fourth down, and it appears at least Liberty Center is going to line up to go for it. It's fourth and about half a yard. You got to believe this is a sneak by your quarterback, right? Eight seconds on the play clock. And they're going to run the play, getting a little help as Chambers is going to push. And boo hoo hoo, this one's going to be close. I don't think he got there. And do you remember in Number the playoff game last year, get a look at right there. Great penetration inside. And I think Archibald's going to. And they're not even going to yeah, measure. They, they've measure. already said it's Archibald football. But remember, you're going to playoff game. Archibald went for early and fourth down in their own end. David, David, DJ Newman ran a quarterback sweep. Liberty Center stomped it cold and took over in great starting position. Oh, boy, this could kickstart. Archbold's offense in a big way. Best, easily, best starting position all night for Archbold. Yeah, they're at the Liberty Center, 31, following the loss of Downs. See if they can take advantage, trying to get into this one. 
Archibald not a lot to show offensively. Here's Carson Dominic on first down. He's going to run right into an Owen Box bear hug and carry him forward for a couple of yards. Now how about that collision, right? 62 Box. One on one with Dominic. You got to respect the, the fact that the diesel truck keeps on moving. The big box upfield. Gain of three on the run. It's going to bring up second and seven. Streaks will send Hurst in motion. Brenner trying to roll back the opposite way, and it comes back to that far sideline, fires a pass. And again, that's going to be incomplete. A little too far for the intended target. Uh, it's one to watch on film tomorrow. They're going to have a touchdown with Kern coming back across the field, but the pressure of Bockelman gets in the face of Brenner where he couldn't throw the football. Brenner seems like every time he's tried to throw the football tonight, he's had at least one black jersey in front of him. Third and seven coming up here. If you're eligible, do you get two downs to do this? Give it, just give him the football. Yeah, the way this game has unfolded, this is your best starting position. You got to take advantage. So if it's a workable fourth down, let's go. And Brenner trying to draw him off sides. It looks like he'll take a timeout. So we'll take timeout. one as well here. Archibald. Timeout for the Blue Streaks. We'll see what they do on third down when we return. Well, that unbelievable punt by uh, Creighton Kern that set Liberty back a little bit was the uh, first call of this second quarter. First call of the quarter brought to you by KK Collision, your first call for automotive body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. Big call coming up here for the Blue Streaks. Gonna be third down, they can go Jack Hurst at quarterback. And that run play is gonna be snuffed out. As big Landon Bockelman will meet the quarterback, come up with a stop. Yeah, one of the big killer bees on this defense, Bockelman. Big fella, he is not confused by who's playing quarterback. You see Coach Peterson over there for Archbold grabbing him so he doesn't roll over the rest of the guys on that sideline. Fourth down, got to go if you're Archbold. Nothing's gone your way all night, but Liberty Center, great job recognizing Kern was in at quarterback. No, it's going to be quarterback run. Loss of two on the run will bring up a fourth and nine. Brenner back in has three receivers, going to roll to the near sideline under pressure. Fires a pass, and that one's going to be knocked away. Incomplete, a solid job defensively. Done there once again by Jeff Zacharias. Now watch Zacharias. He knows it's going to be an outbreaking route because the alignment by Benfeld, the throw is going to be just a little bit inside. Uses that right hand to swat it away. Boy, when Liberty Center needed their defense to rise up again, after terrible field position, they come up big in a big way. Big stop by the Liberty defense. Tigers take over at their own 30. And now they come out with a couple of receivers coming. You see in the bottom of your screen. That was a big stand by Liberty Center. That game, would have, this game would have been very different had Archibald gone in to score. Zyder looks to run on first down, cuts up field. He's got running room. He'll have a slant welling first down as he's out across the 45 yard line. Archibald's had no answer all night long. Uh, gets a very good block on the outside to seal the edge. That is Colton Chambers who takes the hip of the defensive end and drives it, but Zyder has been the big threat on the run game so far for Liberty Center. Pickup of about 15 on the run, moves it out to the 45 yard line. Tigers in a shotgun will run. Uh, the officials will hold things up here. And they're traveling against Liberty Center. Now, I believe that's a false start signal, isn't it? Looking forward to some hardwood basketball action in the winter. It's going to be here quickly already the halfway point of the high school football season. Regular season is the... Playoffs give us another five weeks. Yeah, we go from scalding hot to bitter cold in the playoffs. Very, very quick. We might get that tonight. Temperatures dropped as the sun's gone down. First and 15, but Matthew Orr trying to run, turns the corner, picks up the penalty yardage and more. Just to get out to about the 47 yard line. Now look at Lay lead the way. You also get a block by Navarre to seal it. Of seven. Tyler Late, as a sophomore, he is fantastic. 
that gets on the perimeter and sees sees guys on the edge. A lot of sophomores, when they pull, they don't see guys. Lay sees them all the time. Second and eight coming up here for Liberty Center. Break the huddle with under seven to go. This might be one of those uh, time-consuming drives that the Tigers have been known to have. Zider drops way back, looking to throw under pressure. And wafts this one towards the Archibald cheerleaders and incomplete. Now he's flushed out of the pocket by Burroughs, number 54, who comes free on the inside. The Defensive box. tackle flushes him out, and he's going to run. But number 15, Jack Hurst, comes out of his flat responsibility. He's going to square him up for Zider. Smartly throws it away. Third and eight coming up here for Liberty Center. So we'll make a personnel change. Zider's pass incomplete. Traveling out of bounds. Trips to the near side. It means they're going to have one on one coverage to the top side. Designer looking, fires middle of the field, has a man open. Pass is going to be complete. It's enough for another smart welding first down as he hits Riley Chapa. Isn't it amazing the curl flat combination after all these years still works? You clear it out with the inside. Slot goes vertical. You run the curl by the outside receiver. Inside receiver runs the flat. Whatever the flat defender does is wrong. Hurst jumps on the out. You hit the curl behind it. Great execution by Liberty Center. Great job with our Wright State University Lake Campus replay. Saw that throw come right into your living room. Tigers driving after the Swan Welding first down. It's Cruz trying to bounce to the outside, trying to run out of one would-be tackler. Jack Hurst able to wrangle him down. Yeah, Hurst, fantastic effort. Going to have one on one. Really, it's a touchdown saving tackle because if Cruz gets by, there's nobody outside other than Miller that can make a tackle. And here's the problem for Archbold, partner. Remember early in the game when it was four or five white jerseys making tackles on runners? Mm -hmm. Now it's down to one guy. So this run game is slowly chewing him up. No gain on that play, brings up second and 10. Zider looking to throw once again, all kinds of time, lofts another one up, and that one's gonna be incomplete. That one hung up in the air just a bit too long, and that was enough to allow Carter Bainfeld to come up and knock that one away. Yeah, I wonder. I understand why he threw it, because when he throws it, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, right? He doesn't know Bainfeld's gonna come off his receiver and make a play on the football. Great effort by Bainfield to recognize where the ball's going, leave his man, and knock it away. Also been another big play for Liberty Center. Third and 10 coming up for the Tigers. Third and 10, it, it feels like third and one for them all the time, doesn't it? How many times the last two weeks has we, we've seen this Liberty Center team make a big third down and long conversion? Tight formation. Archibald trying to cheat a couple guys up to the line. Zider trying to draw them off sides, and it's not going to work. And now the Tigers will take a timeout. So the timeout will step aside as well. We'll see what Liberty Center does elect like to do on third down when we return to WOSF. Third and 10 coming up here for Liberty Center. So they've driven into Archibald territory once again. They got the football at the Blue Streak 42. Plenty of time, but you got to feel like, partner. One more touchdown here by the Tigers. That's going to feel like about three or four. Zider with a roll, looks to throw, has a man open as Chapa's going to hold on to that one and fall out of bounds at about the 30 yard line. Uh, Riley Chapa, the leading receiver on this football team, only had eight grabs on the year coming in, but they're going to run a flood concept right here. They're going to bite. You're going to see Gomez fly up. Right there on the flat route, it's going to open the window. Three tiers, and Zider correct read again. Another third down conversion for Liberty Center. First down of the 26. First downs again brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company. Tigers on the move, the five to go. Zider looking to run straight up the middle. Runs into a mass of humanity, not a whole lot of running room there. That's Josiah Gomez coming up from the strong safety linebacker spot in his defense number 22. Knocked in from the outside, made the tackle. 29 tackles coming into tonight. Capable tackler. Second and eight coming up here for Liberty Center. 
It's been a long drive already for Liberty Center. Archwell got to finally make a play defensively. Tigers may try to take up as much of this final four and a half minutes as they can. Zider looking to run once again, becomes a running back when he cuts up field. He'll hold on to the football and it's going to be third and short. Yeah, the thing that you forget about Zane Zider, right, is that he's a big fella too. So he's going to deliver some punishment. That's a lot of weight coming at you, 6'2", 190 pounds. So it's like having another fullback in your offense. The free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. Third and two coming up here for the Tigers. Two chances to pick up a couple of yards. Split backs in the backfield. Handoff goes to the second man through. It's going to be Colton Cruz trying to get to the first down. Fell forward. Looks like he's going to be just shy. That played pretty well by Wyatt Ripke. They're going to signal it's fourth down. Problem was it was too short on third down, right? Third and ten. No problem. We'll pick that up. Third and two. Got issues. Third and two turns in a fourth and one. Might be the biggest play of this football game from here, right? Oh, yes. It, it, no doubt in my mind, Liberty Center picks this up. They're going in to score right before half. And, that, and this game's going to be much different in the second half. Tried to quarterback sneak last time on fourth and short. Split backs. Quick pitches to Orr. Cutting up field. He'll have that first down as he's finally going to be brought down at about the 11-yard line. The shades of Alan Amici, Colts versus Giants. First overtime game, little fullback toss to the outside. Didn't go quarterback sneak this time because they saw Archbold was ready for it. Got it out to Seagap. That is a tough run to defend on short yardage. Well executed by Liberty Center. And this is a Swanton Welding first downs. First downs tonight again brought to you by the uh, Swanton Welding Company. Provided custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at SwantonWeld.com. Tigers running out of first down opportunities. First and 10 from the 11. Quick pitch, going back to Orr, cutting up this time left side. He'll get inside the five as he powers his way to about the four yard line. Now watch number two, Colton Cruz, boom, right there. That's what you call a pancake block. That's delivering a world of hurt. And then Cruz takes a look, sees this damage that he created. That is when it's fun to be a lead blocker. Great shots with our Wright State University Lake Campus replays. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. And yeah, just keep taking that sledgehammer, hitting that boulder. Eventually it becomes rocks. That's what Liberty Center's offense has done. Second and short from the four. It's not going to matter as Matthew Orr will get in and score the KK Collision touchdown. Well, it's loud in here, and it should be. Just another kick out by Cruz, and Orr speed bumps first for the touchdown. The touchdowns tonight brought to you by KK Collision, your first call for automotive body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. 15 nothing now as Ian Rosebrook on to attempt the extra point. He's able to get this one up, and the extra point is good. All oh, Tigers so far. The Orr touchdown makes it 16 0. We'll take a break here in WOSN. Matthew Orr with a four yard touchdown run has extended this Liberty Center lead now 16 0. Tigers lead the Archibald Blue Streaks' big battle mid season. The winner moving to 5 0, 2 0. In the NWOAL, both teams coming in ranked in the top 10 in Division 5, also battling for Region 18 playoff spots. So quite a bit on the line here. So far, it's been all Tigers. Good kickoff. This one will send Jack Hurst back at about the six yard line. He's able to get out to about the 20, where he's finally going to be pushed out of bounds as a whole host of Tiger special teamers. Yeah. Miles is trying to count them and he <laughs> run out of fingers. <laughs> yeah, watch this. Paul Amstel, special teams coach, does such a good job at Liberty Center, and he's got to be absolutely excited. Look at the guys keeping their arms free. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys there at the football at the end of the play. That is pursuing to the football. So we added a new thing to our broadcast, and we're going to put Ken Reeker to work pretty quick here. And so we got a trivia question coming up here. See if we can get it after this play. 
As the Tigers uh, go in defense, Archibald will start from their own 20. Brenner rolls far side, looking to throw. Still looking, has a man open. It's going to be a Swan Welding first down as Chase Miller is able to haul that in for the Blue Streaks. So trivia time, but the win against Archibald, or Brian last week, Archibald football coach David Dominic picked up his 60th career win, as we mentioned in our pregame. Trails Hall of Fame coach John Downey, by the way, here tonight, sitting above us calling the game for Archibald Radio, led the streaks from 1979 to 2008. How many wins did Coach Downey retire with? A lot. We'll tell you after halftime. We'll give everyone the uh, halftime break. Another quick throw, getting to the sideline again, stepping out of bounds. It's Chase Miller, so back-to-back -back first downs here for the Blue Streaks. Now people are going to say, why is he suddenly getting into some rhythm? Well, it's by design. You're throwing little hitch routes and comeback routes. And the defense, what are they doing? Well, they're letting you have them because they're going to trade yards for time. The secondary is playing off and keeping all receivers in front. Problem, though, is if you're Liberty Center, you don't want to do it too much because you don't want the quarterback to get in rhythm. Brenner gets the snap. This time he's going to roll to the near side. Being pressured, this one is going to be thrown to the uh, Liberty sideline where it's incomplete. It's Trenton Cruz who times the backer, blitz up absolutely spectacularly. Splits the tackles and gets there so quick. Dominic can't even reach him with a, a play side block. Now you might want to go on two once in a while if you're a harge bold. Second and 10 now from the 42 yard line. Poor Hayden Dickman, the right tackle, had no chance as the blitz was this perfect time. Brenner picks up a snap. This one's going to be deflected at the line, incomplete. How good Bockelman been in this first half on oh, no, a correction? That's going to be Hammond Tree. It gets that left hand up. That is a big dude to throw over. Hammond Tree, six foot four. And look at that reach. Catch radius through the roof. Third and 10 coming up here for the Blue Streaks. Brenner looking to throw under pressure once again is able to complete this one as he gets a man open. Tackle's going to be made in the field of play, so it'll be short of a first down as the catch was made by Jack Hurst. You know, watch Trent Cruz, he almost splits him in half. He is flying up. He's going to make contact right there. Oh, he's just a half a step behind. But his buddies run to the football, make the tackle. It's going to take a big fourth down. Timeout taken by the streaks. They're going to talk about what to do on a fourth down here, as you see that on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard, 16 nothing, 41 seconds to go. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Northwest State. Get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Yeah, we have it as timeout from Liberty Center. Was it Archibald that called it? I thought that was. Maybe that was a Liberty timeout. Yeah, on the scoreboard that has timeout one, Archibald, Liberty Center two. Yeah, I think it was Archibald that called it. Interesting because if you throw an incomplete here, you're on your own four inside your own inside your own uh, 50. You give Liberty Center the football. Yeah, plus side of the field with, with two timeouts left. About 35 or so seconds after the play goes. So we'll see what. Uh, yeah, the problem though is when you're down 16 nothing, there are no there aren't really good choices. The choices are tough to make, and Coach Dominic elects to make a tough one here. Brenner on the field. Give to Bainfeld trying to cut up field, and he's going to get the first down as he's brought down at the Liberty Center 45. Well, I thought it was going to get blown up by Cruz in the backfield right here. You're going to see Cruz show up, but he's too deep in the backfield. Good athletic ability by Bainfeld to make a miss, make Zacharias miss as well. Huge conversion for Archibald. Big job to get the uh, Swanton Welding first down. Streaks stay alive. Clock runs at 22 seconds. Brenner trying to step up. He's going to take off and run. Loses the football. And it looks like he's going to jump on top of it back at about the 47. And a timeout by Archbold to save a little bit of time. This takes way too long. Brenner going to take off with it after a pump fake. 
And this is going to be on Forsair. This is the fourth time he's put the ball on the ground this year. They've only lost one. You think he was panicking when he saw that ball on the turf? It looked like he was just trying to put it away and just mishandled it. Timeout taken here with 11 timeout seconds to go before halftime. Not very often your quarterback coughs it up on a fumble four times in one year, and you get it back three of those four times. Brenner alertly panics, fights back, and gets it. Or else it could have been a scoop and score time for Liberty Center. We're running out of time now for Archibald. Just 11 seconds to go before halftime. You are on Liberty Center 48. So you try to get about half of this and then go for the end zone. And if you're Matt Bryan, though, for Liberty Center, defensive corner, you're taking your safety, put them at about the 15, everybody loosen up, right? Who cares if they catch a 15 or a 20 yarder? You don't want to fall for any double move stuff, which, you know, Archbold has a litany of double move routes in their offense. They saw the defensive backs for Liberty Center. They were back at about the 30 yard line. Now with uh, three receivers on the field, they'll come up. Yeah, I still think they're too tight. They'll play man-to-man -man coverage. Now they'll begin to back up. See them backing up. Yeah, they're going to play quarters now. So Brenner looking up, and he's going to get sacked back in his own 47-yard line as Bachelman will come up with another one. Yeah, partner, that's scary because they only rushed three. They're going to drop eight in the coverage. Watch Bachelman, just a rip move underneath. Keeps working, working. Gets to the quarterback. If you can get to the quarterback with three, oh boy, how sweet is that if you're a defensive coordinator? That's how our first half will end. All Tigers, 16 0 at the break. We'll have the second half for you after this on WOSN. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here at K Kip Kern Field, Rex Lindgren Tiger Stadium at Liberty Center. Been all Tigers so far. This big matchup in the NWOAL as a Liberty Center leads the streaks 16 to nothing. Now, one of our checks of the game was lead, don't chase, right, for Liberty Center. They've done a good job of that. Played the field position battle early in this football game. How big was that punt that was down to inside the one yard line, led to the safety and then led to the touchdown off of the safety and really turned this whole football game around. And again, our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Liberty Center and Archibald is the State Bank of Western Northwest West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. And uh, we gave this earlier, we'll give the answer here once play starts in the third quarter. Uh, we're going to add little bits and pieces as the, the season goes along. We can only thank our Miles Holiday for coming up for this great idea. <laughs> Miles goes, oh, hey, by the way, Randy can come up with trivia questions. Each the week. mayor of Northwest Ohio knows it all, right? So with the win against Brian last week, Archibald football coach David Dominic picked up his 60th career win. He now trails only Hall of Fame coach John Downey, who led the streaks of, in career wins. Right. Who led the streaks from 1979 to 2008, included in that state championship in 1988. How many wins did Coach Downey retire with? We'll give you the answer here very shortly into our third quarter. I think all the great coaches have come through the NWAL, Downey being one of them. They had a pretty good one here for a long time here at the Liberty Center, huh? They sure did. Rex Lindgren, who I'm sure is roaming. He might be up in the press box somewhere. Tigers will get the football first. Again, they won the toss and deferred. As Kern has this teed up, we are underway with a second half. This one will be fielded at about the seven yard line. Good return to begin the second half. As a breaking free is Landon Cruz, and he's gonna be out across the 30. Now Hayden Dickman runs down and it's enough to All knock him to the ground. Not every day you see an offensive tackle running down on kickoff. We'll be right at the 30. That's where the Tigers start. Should I give the viewers a hint on the trivia answer? Oh, absolutely. I can tell you that the number begins with two. Three digit number. Two, Three digit it? number. I, I sound like Aggie Sedley now. First down handoff straight up the middle. Liberty Center might not get too fancy with this double-digit lead. Colton Cruz gets the first down call. Yeah, for Archibald to come back and win this one, they're going to have to get some help from Liberty Center. Keeping on the ground is going to be a good thing for Liberty Center moving forward. 
All right, so we've given you a little bit of time. That answer. Get Miles, you got a guess before you get it? I, ca I can't because I saw the answer. You oh, sent it to that's me. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that'd be cheating. So with the win, that answer. Oh, the suspense. We'll get it. 222. Good run. Speaking the twos on second down, looks like it's going to be enough for a Swanton Welding first down here number for the two, Tigers. Four, Devin two, Morris, number 28 for Archbold, gets involved on the tackle, but not before. Another first down for Liberty Center. Real important. Jack Downey's defense of Archbold gets a stop here right away. Unfortunately, I believe it's Chapa that's walking off the field, a little dinged up for Archbold. He's able to get back to the sidelines, so and not a long lull here. We'll get back to playing. And Gabe Chapa walking off. They're taking a look at, I think it's his ankle. Looks like he'll be all right, though. Fresh set of downs for the Tigers at the 41 yard line. Handoff again to the first man through. He's getting a big, heavy dose of Cruz here. And yeah, Dominic just Cruz reads Cruz coming right after him. So he fills the gap in front, one-on-one, -on -one, gets help with by Morris. Gain of two. Big second down here early in the second half. Archbold, they can get off the field, get their offense some good field position. Got to put one play in front of the other, get back in this football game. Tigers have gone to a lot of uh, Colton Cruz. He got the uh, first call of the third quarter. First call of the quarter brought to you by KK Collision. Your first call for automotive body mechanical shop and light and heavy duty towing. Now you remember USC years ago when they just kind of get the tailback out on the perimeter, be student body right, student body left. Ricky Bell, OJ Simpson, all kinds of great running backs. Well, that's kind of what they're doing right there. Look at all the guys pulling around. And their version of OJ, Zane Zider carrying the football on the outside. Ricky Bell, remember that guy? He was a fantastic runner. Charles White, another one at USC. Oh, Marcus Allen, they're all coming back to me now. One of us is showing their age. <laughs> Remember when every team in the Big Ten ran the football? Uh, I miss those days. Third and three. Blue Street defense trying to get a stop. They'll have one there. As they'll come up with a fourth down here. It's going to be a minimal gain. Great job of fighting off his block. Mason Siegel keeping everything in front. He builds the wall first, and all the white jerseys rally up. Huge third down stop. You see the emotion of Devin Morris leading the way, number 28, trying to be an inspirational leader, fighting through that ankle injury. Big stop for Archibald. Max Walker has done a phenomenal job when called on to punt. Back at his own 35-yard line. It's a good snap. He'll step into this one. This one will roll as Miller's going to get out of the way. That's going to take another Tiger bounce. This one won't die at the one yard line on the coffin corner, but I think Liberty will settle for the 15 yard line. Yeah, probably his ugliest punt, right? But Max Walker gets the ball to roll. He doesn't have to be good, just be lucky. Gets a good bounce. And again, we saw a couple runs out of Colton Cruz as our first call of the opening quarter brought to you by KK Collision. Your first call for automotive body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. Saw a couple KK Collision t-shirts in the, in the crowd tonight. A little young fella right in front of us. I threw a t-shirt too. He's going to hold it for later because he's wearing his KK Collision shirt. Archibald will the start of the 16-yard line. You see 8.43 to go in our third quarter. Scoreboard tonight on problems on the direct snap and the shotgun. Oh, confusion in the backfield. Brenner As Cade Brenner looked like snap. it was uh, going to be a, a handoff and just went down to a knee to avoid losing the football. And the second time in this football game, remember oh, earlier, is that the, their own goal line that had some confusion with the snap. And Burrows and the quarterback, Brenner, not on par with the direct snap. And you know, if you're going to be a shotgun team, you just have to realize that's going to happen on occasion. And a big loss of about five. Sets up second and long with Brenner in the shotgun. Rolls out to the far side, back into the end zone. Under pressure, he's going to take a big hit as Bockelman is going to introduce himself to the Archibald quarterback. Oh, well, Bockelman's had himself a night. It's going to be a reverse spin out, roll to the left. See the lineman pulling in front of him. 
but nobody is open. Trying to hit Benfeld. Box is going to get him too. Bockelman. Power cleans him to the ground. Third and 22. Back of the five yard line. Don't want to give anything away for our dynamic dude, but my man Miles mm. seems to have dusted off two helmets. <laughs> It hasn't been an A effort. It's been a B effort, but a good B. Third down run. Archwell just trying to give their punt unit a little bit of running room. Hey, some of us are happy to get these, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Inside trap. They're going to kick it out, but Cruz is going to be there to stop Carson Dominic. And remember one of our checks tonight was fill up that diesel truck. Liberty Center has said, hey, you need to be an electric car. They are not giving him any diesel. Caton Kern on to punt. The snaps to him. Been a little bit of an issue tonight. Another low one he's got to dive for. Barely gets this one off. This one will be fielded back at his own 45. Good Ratus coming here. Landon Cruz now a flag coming in. Might have an illegal block in the back at midfield. We'll push this one back. Yeah, it's going to come back because of the block in the back. See if we can pick it up. They're going to say it was right there. Now, this might surprise you. Everybody sitting around us, they were upset by that call. They did not think it, it was a block in the back. I'm shocked. Great look. Spotted right at the 50, so it should be an easy walk off. A good look uh, on the instant replays. And again, our replays tonight brought to you by the Wright State University Lake After Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus yards. offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Well, Liberty Star thinks this is a bigger penalty than what it is. Right all the whole way up at their 25. It's just a 10 yard. I must have thought it was a 15 yard walk off. Now they begin the 20 yard trek just to get to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way Archibald will hear what the play was in the huddle. Single back in the backfield. Call's going to go to him. He's trying to fight forward. Matthew Orr looking for running room. Orr again, a little banged up. Had the wind knocked out of him against Wasion. Played sparingly after that. But when you led. The Indians, by as many as Liberty did, you can afford the liberties of playing them sparingly. Yeah, watch how quickly the Blue Streak secondary flies up on run. At some point in time, Liberty Center will take another shot on play action, see if they can get Hammond Tree free alone again like he was on the seven route for the touchdown. Gain of two makes it second and eight. Zyder trying to get outside, got a block. But a nice job, I believe Devin Morris, number 28, a part of that stop. He gets pretty fired up. Oh, Devin Morris, he's gonna do a little belly to back, or belly to belly suplex right there. Picks him up and takes him, sidewalk slam to the ground. The only thing he didn't do was cover him for the three count. Fantastic work by Devin Morris. I'd say that ankle's feeling pretty good. Old Devo getting it done. Third and eight now for the Tigers. Gets no easier for Archibald. They're back home next week. They're going to take on a Delta team, which, by the way, if they manage to get a win, here's a pass. Middle of the field, that one's going to be broken Zyder's up incomplete. Trying to hit the uh, Chambers, Chambers. Depending on the play for the Blue Streaks, number 15, yeah, Jack Hurst. Kern just, or Hurst just gets right over top of it with that right hand. Fourth down and eight. A pretty good route by Chambers, walled him off. I think the throw is down a little bit closer to the numbers, might be a catchable ball. A fourth and eight, Liberty will punt once again. Walker's done an amazing job. He'll step into this one, no pressure. High punt. And once again, Chase Miller's gonna let this one go. And that one's going to be out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Yeah, Miller knew it right away. Well, Slapped his hands to together. Probably should have caught that, save his team about 14 yards in field position. He had time to get over because that ball was high, high in the air. That was some serious hang time by Walker. Well, 5.07 to go with third quarter. You see it there in our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Northwest State Community College is our scoreboard sponsor, Northwest State. Get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you 
for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. First down pass, trying to set up a screen to Dominic, and he's gonna be tracked down from behind at about the 22 yard line. Big number 50, Xander Zider with a big stop. Look at Zider, read it well, sees the running back leak out to the left and chase it down from behind. Unfortunately, someone is down for Liberty Center. So they take a look at the injured player. We'll take a break here on WOSN. The injured player for Liberty Center able to get up, but believe that was Landon Cruz. Got a little bit of help back to the sideline here. Second and four for the Blue Streaks back underway. Send a man in motion, giving it to Dominic once again. He'll have a first down, a little bit more as he breaks free, but it looks like this one's gonna come back as Dominic finally is gonna be brought down at the Liberty Center 40, but there is a flag back at the 21 yard line. Now you're gonna hear everybody in blue and gold groan as they're gonna call a hold right there, number 73, Hayden Dickman's gonna get called for it. Biggest offensive play of the night erased on creative blocking. See our uh, Wright State University Lake Campus replay. Good shot. We'll bring this back. The uh, a little bit of a counter look out of this Archbold offense. Your coach David Dominic, you circle that one. Don't forget about it because it popped. Just come back and run it cleanly. Second and four will now change to second, and looks like about 14. After the 10 yard walk off. For the and the streaks will huddle second up again. And Call it second and 15, you see there. Kate Brenner in an empty backfield. He's got three receivers to the top side. He's looking that way, nothing open. He's gonna take off and run, and he'll get to about the 11 yard line. And making a stop in the bottom of the pile once again. Looks like Seth Navar, number 70, you see him. A continuously rushing three against the quarterback, letting your linebackers see the eyes of the quarterback. When he takes off, they can come make the tackle. That was uh, a good tackle by Matt Orr, getting some help also by Cruz. We'll call it third and 14. So we're now down under four to go in the third quarter in our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Tigers next week, by the way, should they hold on to this win, will take their undefeated record here, actually return to home here, take on the Swanton Bulldogs. Pass middle of the field, a big third down conversion as that pass is going to be caught. As making the catch will be Brody Bailey, good junior receiver. Now you go too high, safety. You just run to the vacate. You're going to say it's a post. But kind of an arrow route in the vacated area. Easy pitch and catch, best throw of the night for Brenner. And something took place in between plays here. As a swan welding first down, and after the ball was spotted, someone might have kicked the football. Now it's whether or not it was inadvertently kicked. Someone running back into the huddle, so they will wave off the penalty. First and 10, Archbold on the 33 yard line. That's Streets a good job, of, good job of officiating. They got together and talked about it. Didn't think that was done intentionally. Streaks have it at their own 32. And now more flags and whistles, at least whistles, not necessarily flags. And Coach Dominic over there, fit to be tied with the white hat. Uh, the, when the ball was inadvertently kicked, they marked it back to the spot where it had rolled back to. So. Heads up by the Archibald coaching staff, realizing that uh, the ball had gone backward a yard, so they'll spot it up at the 33. The 33 is where the chains sit on the far side. Just Coach Dominic having his uh, conversation. He's not happy with what he's hearing. He's given his explanation, we'll continue on. Well, a kickball game broke out. No bouncers. Brenner, quick throw. is going to have that one through the hands of Bainfeld. Incomplete. Brenner's passing 
It's been their best route of the Harder night, ball. just running a little hitch. Sainfelt tries to catch it. Takes his eyes off it before it's in his hands. He's going to run with it. Brenner puts it a little too high for him. Heard the footsteps of the three defenders coming. Let the ball slip through his hands. Second down. Now we'll have issue with an official. Might have. Uh, I guess he got a blood. little blood on the official, so they'll take care of that real quick. My trainer going to clean him up. Put a little wrap on that. Some dangerous for the stripes out there as well. Still need some officials in the state of Ohio, don't we? Yeah, there's still there's a, there's a, a need, yes. So if you're interested in becoming an official, you will not you will not regret it. I guarantee that you'll be close to the game. You'll get to hang out with some other guys. You know what you're going to do on a Friday night and get paid to do it. I do like what the uh, NWOAL has done as. Uh, each athlete, as they graduate after their senior years, given a letter telling them that if they're still looking for ways to be involved in high school sports, like, hey, your, your playing days are done. If you're not playing in college, have you ever thought about becoming an official? I tell you what, if I was still coaching, I would have every single one of the kids that graduate go do that and then referee our games. Work well in your favor, wouldn't it? <laughs> Quick pitch to Dominic, trying to find some running room, and it's the second hit that's going to get him as the big lick applied there by Owen Box. Now, Colton Cruz blows it up first. He left the game earlier. Good to see him back out there, and he just blows it up in a big way. And how about the bad news for Dominic? You turn back to cut it, and there's Big Box waiting for you. Well, third and 12 coming up here. There's always big box. Oh, like not like big Amazon boxes because there's always big boxes <laughs> at my house. Hey, no, nobody's sad to see the Amazon driver coming to his house, are they? Another third down for the Blue Streaks. Brenner trying to throw this one as far as he can downfield. It's intercepted. A defensive backfield's done a great job once again. A great return into Archville territory as Landon Cruz comes up with a pick, and we got a flag down at the end of this one. Watch all the black jerseys. Rushing four. Get to the quarterback first. Rush the throw, and it's a good thing they got there because this was going to be a touchdown. But Brenner's not able to get enough on it. Yeah, you see, I think they were, we'll get an illegal block in the back. Saw a grab of the jersey on the return, so the interception will stand. You got a man down cramping as well for Liberty Center. The weather's cooled off. We haven't seen that the last couple of weeks. We'll take a look at this uh, interception one more time, Miles. See how Brenner is on the back foot, can't drive through, holds it up in the air, and it's going to allow Liberty Center to, to work their way over and intercept that. And then you're going to see the hold right there. You're going to call it on Cruz. But another big turnover. How big has this defense been? Landon Cruz with the interception. It's number four on the year to lead the NWOAL. Tigers will have it at the Archibald 46, trying to put this one away. How big would one more touchdown be? That's a stingy defense, only giving up six points a game. Most impressive, though, that number of yards per rush, 1.42 that they allow. Crazy. Already have two shutouts on the year. This could be the third one. Zyder under center. Give to Cruz. Cuts up field. Holds on to the football. Saw some hands trying to reach in there as Fulton Cruz will get to about the 39-yard line. Yeah, Buck sweep. Fake the inside to the fullback. Get the linebackers to suck up. And then give it to the wing back around. Not a bad choice. Give it to a guy that averages over six yards per carry. And he gets seven there, so second and three. You might not see this Liberty Center team leave their base formations the rest of the game. Give to the first man through is Matthew Orr. Orr trying to fight forward. And judging by our near official, looks like he's going to be stopped for about no game. Yeah, David Orr again. He's as big as the whole West Coast. Just engulfs the fullback Orr. That's a guy that 
Archbold could really rely on moving forward. That is a sizable young man, and you see the Archbold faithful, not uh, as excited as they normally are. It looks like Spirit Night, country, country dress up, I think. Is that what you picked up? That's a little questionable. Yeah, third and three, I wasn't quite sure. I saw some straw hats. Yeah, so maybe it, it's it's Woody from Toy Story Woody Night. Hey, that well, that could be. I don't know. I will tell you say this though, that Coach uh, Ken Reeker zooms in, but the young man up in the top row. We see if we pan out a little bit. Can you pan out there, Kenny? That guy, yeah. See him on the top row. That fellow, he works out. Look at that. Those are some serious arms on that guy. Is the shirt size a medium? <laughs> it's a medium. Looks like a young Randy Roberts oh. in high school. <laughs> Fourth and three. Tigers will punt with the lead. They're going to let this clock run all the way down. Try to make this the final play of the quarter. As Walker's pinned in Archibald deep once already tonight. And it looks like he's going to do it again. Max Walker, Walker fantastic team. night. That's how the third quarter will end, so Archibald will have the football looking for some points when we return WOSF. Well, the Archibald Blue Streaks looking for some points down 16 nothing as we begin at quarter number four. This big matchup in the NWOAL looking for our first call of the quarter. And our first call looks like it's gonna be a big run out of Carson Dominic near first down yardage. Our uh, first call of the quarter. Brought to you by KK Collision, your first call for automotive body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. And David Dominic, the head coach and play caller for Archibald, goes back to a play that popped last possession, but was called back on a holding call. Big yardage again out of it. We will give uh, Carson Dominic 10 yards, so it is a Swanton Welding first down going back to him. Tiger defense is going to swarm all over them there, hold them to about a yard or two on first down. And Dominic trying to get free again. Tough to do when you're on one leg. Grabbed the ankle, couldn't get the wheels turning. That's how you stop the diesel truck. You flatten the tires. Second and nine coming up. So you don't put sugar in the gas tank or anything like that. Does that not, work? Not that I would know. That not that I would know. Did you just call me sugar? <laughs> Second down, diving effort, but the official right on top of it's gonna say that Chase Miller trapped that one, it's gonna be an incomplete pass. Yeah, it's gonna be Riley Choppa, one on one, stops on his back pedal, applies just enough pressure, throwing the outside. You know, one you believe that normally Chase Miller comes up with. And it looks like they got another injured player on the field, so we'll take a quick break here on WOSM. I think training staff for Liberty Center is still looking at an injured player right near the sideline. Actually, might, I'm sorry, it might be an Archibald player. My apologies. They're not able to see who it is, so we don't want to speculate. Teams talking this over here, the extended break as they continue to uh, look here. So Archibald trying to get something going. It looks like they're breaking the huddle. Well, Archibald was ready, then it looks like it got called back. As we are able to see that it was, that was Chase Miller who tried to come up with that catch. And he's got a little, looks like might be a little blood on the elbow. So with the turf here, if you don't have uh, skin protected, it might have a little bit of blood. So he will have to, he goes right to the huddle and then he's gonna be disappointed when he finds out he'll have to sit out at least one play. Right, good to see him up though. Real important member of that Archibald football team. And if you never played on turf, you, you get the adrenaline going, you don't realize that your, your skin is getting burned up, and then you hop in the shower afterwards, and that hot water reminds you that you played on turf. And Miller was diving for a football near the sideline. I don't know if he got the point of his football in his stomach. Maybe he got uh, the wind knocked out of him momentarily, but it is good to see that he, is, he will be back, we would assume. Brenner, long throw, might be the best throw he's had of the night, throwing that one down the far sideline. It's going to be broken up incomplete, looking for Bainfeld. And Zacharias showed up big time. Double move against a taller receiver. He's not going to bite at all. He's ready for it. Watch Zacharias, number six for Liberty Center, use the sideline as an extra defender, turns the correct way with the ball in the air, and then the right hand goes between the hands of Bainfeld. That is tremendous coverage by Zacharias. Fourth down, we'll see the punt team back onto the field for the Blue Streaks. It's Creighton Kern averaging about 40 yards per kick. Another low snap, but everyone's been low. 
able to get this one off. Line drive effort. That, uh, Chapin Cruz will let go. And that one's going to be downed at about the 26 yard line. End of the third quarter totals for the big sale. Liberty Center will take over once again here. Miles is uh, deeply involved here. That bake sale battle going on as well and giving updates. So where are we at, Miles? All right, so Archbold has sold $1,805 of baked goods. Liberty Center, 2,161. Should also mention, we can see from our spot, it's to the end zone to the east. The Archibald tent is no longer set up. Ooh, then maybe they ran out of product. First down, Zyder looking to throw a little wobbler to the sideline. That one's going to be ruled incomplete. I'm trying to hit Zyder's Chapa here as we take a look at the Wright State University late campus replay. Yeah, you know, Lay does a good job on the pole, sealing it. You see Second Morris try to get outside, but he cramps up, up grabs the ankle. That ball's going to skip, and someday some defense is going to figure out that Liberty Center, when they like to throw the football, they like to go to Chapa. And one thing Archibald didn't want to see is the injured player on the field right now. Yeah, Devin Morris, number 28. you got to wonder, since he hasn't played a whole lot, if he cramped up, they're going to try and get some fluid in him right away. And we were talking during the, one of the last timeouts, buddy. Do you remember... This late in the year, guys cramping up like this. No, we started at about, what, 75, 76 degrees. Once the sun set, it got chilly in a hurry. One of us still in our short sleeves, while the other one very quickly went for the uh, the pullover. <laughs> we won't, we won't, like, just, oh. I don't, I don't want to show, how, yeah, I don't want to. Oh, I got, got the nice WNHL, there it is. Pull over. Thanks, don't, Ken, for busting me out. I don't, don't want to say who couldn't handle the uh, quote-unquote chilly weather. I say that now, and then we'll have a playoff game, fourth round, 32 degrees at kick, me in a hoodie. <laughs> Miles, it's not that cold out here. And then I won't be able to breathe through my nose for a week because... I'll be stuffed up, but it'll be well worth it. Now those hand warmers, they become valuable they that time do. of year, don't they? They absolutely do. Looking forward to, uh, when we get to that here. Still got five weeks left of the regular season, and Matthew Orb banging his way downfield across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. And Matthew Orb, this running fullback lead and kick. See Lay with the trap on the outside. Archibald knew it was coming, blitzed that side, didn't matter, or just kept on plowing. Call it third, and it might be a long three or short four. Look how, look how deliberate Liberty Center is becoming on offense. Say they'll take all the time here. They don't need to stamp this next one until there's about 10 minutes to go. Already inside of five on the play clock. Quick pitch, trying to get to the outside, and a good job fighting for yardage. And it's a first down out to the 40-yard line as Matthew Orr's made his appearance here in the second half. The kick out by Cruz, and number 51, Lay, gets a, just enough to lead the way. Anytime you can drag a defender for an extra five yards, your offensive running game is very efficient. Our first downs tonight again brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company. Provided custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. First down from the 40. Handoff is the first man through. Cruz trying to fight for as much as he can get. He'll get a couple. It's going to bring him second and eight. We want to thank the uh, Cider family and Swanton Welding for all their support down through the years. For, uh, for Miles and I, for actually just about every ende endeavor I've ever done involving high school sports. What do you think the time of possession is going to be at the end of this game? It has been one-sided for sure as Liberty Center going to go trips but bring a fourth man over to seal the edge. That's Chambers on the inside slot. Going to be the lead blocker, Zyder trying to break to the outside. It's going to be design run, trying to turn the corner. 
Looks like he'll get to about the 45 yard line. Running like old crazy legs, Elroy Hirsch right there. Just enough of a wiggle. He always makes the first guy miss. He's awfully strong, get positive yardage. Zane Zider, tremendous runner. It's gonna bring up a third and six coming up here. Yeah, back to the same formation, just to the right-hand side. Be on alert for a counter the other way. That's exactly what will happen. Now he's going to cut up field. Flag's going to come in as Zyder's right at the first down marker, but I believe this one's going to come back. You're going to see it on the back number side. I believe they're going to get the, the center. Tanner Klein Flores with the hold. That official, he was angry about it. Do you see how hard he threw it? Had to make sure it gets to the spot, and that is the call. So we'll have another third down coming up here for the Tigers. Actually pulled up the online stats. I thought I could answer your question. Yes. One stat not provided. Time of possession. Time of possession. Well. It's a lot, a lot to a little. Does that work? G <laughs> One team has possessed the ball more than the other team. That's the kind of analysis you only get here on WOSN. I went to school for that. <laughs> Thanks, University of Toledo. It uh, does make sense. And speaking of the University of Toledo, how do you think your Rockets are going to do tomorrow night against Big uh, win. the Buckeyes? Big win. Big win. Cautiously optimistic. Third and 16. Zyder looking for the throwback screen. It's not open. Can try to throw this away. One's going to be incomplete. Chase Miller looking for the interception. This is well, uh, well read by the Archbold defense. Ready for the back screen, and there's going to be all kinds of illegal men downfield. Yeah, they're going to run the tunnel to the backside. All Archbold did was recognize Owen Box flying out to the flat. Your tackle's going there for a reason. It's going to be the throwback screen. Archbold reads it well. That penalty will be declined, so fourth and 16 will be what the Liberty Center is stuck with. And the their special teams unit, especially their punt unit, has been unbelievably solid. It will uh, come back out onto the field. If you're Archbold, this next offensive possession, you've got to start thinking about speeding the game up, right? You're going to run out of possessions. Maybe, maybe get three possessions from here on out. You're definitely you're probably going to get two, so you're going to have to score on two of the next three possessions to get in this game and steal it. Punt this one. We'll get Chase Miller back once again. Second time we've seen Chase Miller and I regret the decision he made as this one's going to be down inside the 20. You yeah, might want to go with two guys back deep, right? So that ball can't be kicked away from the one. Liberty Center, tremendous game plan, kicking away from Miller. Let it hit and roll. They've gotten probably about an extra 40 yards tonight just on skipping rolls from their punter. Back to blue streaks up. They'll officially call this the 16. Knows that the football might be right near the 15-yard line. Starting to run out of time, as Miles had mentioned. 8.08 now to play. Two-touchdown game for Archibald. Need a couple of touchdowns, a couple of two-point conversions. Now trouble on the snap as Brenner under pressure. A run for his life. He's going to throw this one downfield through three sets of hands, and it's going to be... Caught, I believe, at the 38-yard line. Well, if you're playing in the secondary and you're a receiver going out for a route, I think you might have touched this football. <laughs> Watch how many hands this bounces in and out of. Great job by Brenner just getting out of the pocket and surviving. Brody Bailey, I believe, is the one that's going to come down with it. A little dink of Duncan in his hands. That is a Swan Welding first down pass, middle of the field, trying to get it to the uh, cutting. Dominic is going to be incomplete. Stops the clock, 7.40 to go. It's going to bring second down. One thing that's evident watching, oh, here's back to that replay. The best play of the night for Archbold, a broken play. Let's count the hands. One, two, three, four. And finally, right into the right hands of an Archbold receiver. I'd rather be lucky than good. Second down is Carson Dominic powering forward. By the way, Archibald came into this drive. Negative one yards on the ground tonight. 
You pull the backside offensive lineman. Siegel leads away. Ripke leads away. Positive yardage there. And one thing that's been evident about this Liberty Center defense, right? The front three guys have gotten it done all night long, especially on pass. And then getting hands on receivers. Secondary, great job. Nobody running free in white jerseys. Tiger fans trying to will their defense on. Here's Brenner on the option. Dominic in, he's gonna be stopped back at the 45 yard line. Yeah, tough to run that to the boundary. Ball's on the right side, Hash. Just run out of room. Tried to make a spin move to get it, but fourth down, it looks like it's gonna be go. No, they're gonna punt the football. Well, Brenner's over on the sideline talking to Dominic. Carson Dominic came back in, so we'll see what they like to do here. They might go direct snap to Carson Dominic. Now Archibald a little confused what they were gonna do. They had Jack Hurst out there, and now the Streaks will take a timeout, so we'll take one as well. Big fourth down coming up for Archibald, and uh, we'll see what they do right after this. Big fourth down coming up for Archibald. Miles, this kind of feels like ball game on the line here. Fourth and about three from the 44-yard line. Now they brought Brenner back in. He's going to throw far sideline, and pass is going to be knocked away incomplete. Everybody at Liberty Center recognized what they're going to do. Brought Brenner and Mo or Benfeld in motion. Cruz is going to get underneath it, knock it away. A one man route to the shorthand side. Roll Brenner to it. You can't say enough about the job of Liberty Center's defense all night long. Looks like they're going to pitch their third shutout of the year. Six and a half minutes to go at the 45. This might be the typical Liberty Center football right here, trying to put this one away. Tigers quick handoff on first down, fighting for yardage it is Colton Cruz, and he will get back to the line of scrimmage. Number two, Colton Cruz with the carry. Tackle by number well, Everybody in white jersey is going to fly up and try to get the football out from here on out because they know that's their only way to get a chance to steal this football game. Got to get a turnover. Good job by Cruz holding on to the football there. Second and 10 here. The uh, snap coming in about 13 seconds. Get to the line in a hurry. Broke the huddle a little late. And we'll look to throw. Zyder trying to put this away. Has a man open in complete. Jappa had it and lost it. Not Zyder's best throw of the night. He's got a touchdown. This is going to be a hitch and go against man on man coverage. If he throws it up in the air and lets Chapa run under it, that's a touchdown. Evan Went is going to break it up. Good alert call by Liberty Center. Went in the ball game. Go after some fresh meat as Miller was on the sideline. Third and 10 coming up here for the Tigers. Give Archibald a break, he's gonna stop the clock. 5.33 to go, split backs. Zyder looking to throw once again, rolls out under pressure, fires. That one is gonna short hop his intended target. Curious call, throwing the football there. Gonna save Archibald some time. You run the football, run another minute off before you punt it. Archibald does have two timeouts left. Punt unit for Liberty has been a strong point tonight. Back out onto the field. Looks like Archibald's coming after it. High snap over the head of Walker. It's been the one issue. Trying to get it off. He's not going to be able to do it. He's going to be dropped at the 35-yard line. And Archibald's got a little bit of hope left. A smart decision by Walker not punting this football over his head. Gonna go pick it up and right about here, it looks like he's gonna try and punt the football, but decides smartly to hold on to it and just eat it. 
He punts that. It's going to get blocked. Archibald runs it in for a touchdown. Archibald will have it to Liberty Center 36. Chase Miller will go to the sideline after that play. So one of uh, Archibald's top game-breaking receivers not out there right now in the shotgun is Cade Brenner. Brenner gets the snap, fires middle of the field, and this one is going to be caught at the five-yard line. A great job coming back to get that one, Carter Bainfeld. Uh, you like to take a shot after a big turn of events. There it is, best throw of the night. And look at the creative separation right there by Bainfeld. Shades of Drew Pearson against the Vikings years ago. Swan Welding first down to get a first and goal at the five. Brenner. The handoff, Carson Dominic nowhere to go, and it's going to be second down. And he's a guy that's scored 11 touchdowns on the year in the run game. You know, the diesel truck's the one that's going to carry it inside the red zone. Tons of black jerseys living in the backfield of Archibald. Loss of about three on the run. It's going to bring second and goal from the eight. Going to have to score in a hurry here so you're not stuck having an onside kick. Brenner still in the shotgun, his three receivers to the near side. Fires over the head, had a man open in Bailey, and it's incomplete. Watch the pressure by Cruz right on top. Forces Brenner to throw before he wants, or else that would have been an easy touchdown. Third and goal now, four and a half to go. Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Streaks need a score and a two point conversion. Third and goal from the eight. They isolate Benfield by himself again. Let the guy use his size. Got a match up against a linebacker on the inside here. Same look, three receivers to the near side. Ball's going to come loose, and it looks like the Tigers momentarily had it. Big scrum in the bottom of the pile for the football. Officials are going to separate everyone as we take a look at what happened here. Well, this place is going to erupt. If they signal that it's Liberty Center's football, but an exchange problem that they had earlier in the game comes up again in the worst conceivable time for Archbold, and I don't know how they are able to come up with it. There are black jerseys absolutely everywhere around this football. There's no one able to put their mitts on it, and somehow... Must have been Hayden Dickman that gets in there and grabs One it. One of the linemen for Archibald jumped in. A great job with our crew through the Wright State University late campus replay. And now it's fourth and goal. Archibald won't lose any yards as the handoff never got into the breadbasket of Dominic and then hit off his elbow. So fourth down, and now Archibald's going to want to talk about it. Now calling the timeout here, if you score and get the two-point conversion, basically ensures that you'll be kicking an onside kick because you can only stop the clock one more time from here. But you gotta take care of what's in front of you. You gotta score first, right? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get this on fourth. Yeah, if you don't get this on fourth down, it it's not gonna matter. matter yeah. right? So you gotta take care of what's in front of you, score the touchdown, then worry about the two-point conversion moving forward. And then you gotta get the onside kick. A Lot of stuff has to go right for Archbold to steal this football game. No, normally, and I know you've said this before, the coach shows, all right, What's been our most successful play to get eight yards? Mm. Problem is tonight, partner, there haven't been a whole lot of plays that have gotten Archibald eight yards. Yeah, you're this close, right? I, I isolate Benfeld by himself and just throw it up. Let him you know, be a, a, a basketball player, box out, go get it. He's huge. He's got a good catch radius. Throw it up to him. Let him get a chance to go get it. Fourth and goal. Archibald trying to stay undefeated. They're going to go bunch to the right. Kate Brunner has Dominic in the backfield with him. Extra tight end to the left. Throw back to the tight end. Brunner looking middle of the field. That one's going to be knocked away incomplete. Tried to hit Hurst. Ran all three in routes trying to clear it out. See the two inside receivers go to the post, drag. He has them early, but he waits for him to get to the goal line. Well played by Liberty Center. Take a look at the Wright State University late campus replay. You're going to see Zane Zider 
Number 10, the one that gets one of his hands in there, knocks that away, so the Tigers will get it at their own eight yard line with just 3.43 to go. Now will we see Liberty Center throw any more passes? I think this will be all runs from here. Zyder under center gets, gives it off on first down. We'll get a couple of yards going straight ahead. It's Matthew Orr will get the call. 35, Matthew Orr carries yeah, Moving ball. forward, Game though. Liberty Center, they have Second a swat next week, right? Mm -hmm. And that's Brian after that at Brian. At Patrick Henry, that's always a war. Game, game will be at. Yep. Evergreen and Delta, you got to believe, though, all of those games moving forward, they're favored. Delta, by the way, in a battle with Brian this evening, trying to also stay undefeated in the uh, NWOAL. 3-1 yeah, and one coming into tonight. Huge win over Evergreen last week on a last-second field goal. Second and eight. Here's a quick pitch. Good run. Trying to break free out across the 15-yard line. And for Archibald moving forward, Delta, that will be a big game. Mm -hmm. Evergreen, Swanton, both those on the road. Wasian at home, a team that they have really owned as of late. Another game that I believe our crew is uh, supposed to be at. And then finishing up at Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry's playing pretty good football this year. So is Delta. As always, the NWOAL, very entertaining. Yeah, Patrick Henry is currently shutting out Evergreen through three quarters tonight. Third and three coming up here for the Tigers from their own 15-yard line. Straight ahead, and that might be the biggest swat welding first down of the night. Number two, Colton Cruz carries the ball. Well, why not go to your best run play that you first install? Install, and that's an inside trap. Cruz just follows the great block by Lay. 51, he is a tremendous pull threat. Let the defensive lineman go. Let 51 clobber him upside the head. Big run again for Liberty Center. I want to tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Liberty Center and Archibald is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Another run once again as Liberty Center is going to keep this on the ground. Sargeville can only stop the clock one more time. I don't know if they'll elect to do so here with a minute and a half to go. Miller. Correction, number 12, Miller. Gain of six, second down. Second and four coming up here. The Liberty Center football team will be back in action next Friday night. Here at Liberty Center High School, hosting Swatton. Big shutout It'll win, it Liberty looks Center like, for Liberty. Be the third time the defense has pitched a shutout in five games. Hand off again. Here's Orr cutting back up field. He's got a big hole. He's to midfield. And finally, he's going to be down at the 35 yard line. So one more run to kind of salt Tiger this away down. for the Tigers. Tackle by the Blue Streak, 12, Chase Miller. See it there in a Blue replay, and again, a replay tonight. Has been brought to you by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. 35 yard line, and the Tigers will be in the victory formation as they're going to put this away the Northwest State Community College scoreboard. They'll have to take at least one knee here, take a few seconds. As Zane Sider will take the knee, he'll hug his linemen, and the Liberty Center Tigers are going to come away with a shutout win. It looks like just one more snap will be needed. I want to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight as well, Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Teams on their way to shaking hands. Cheerleaders are fired up. Final seconds ticking away here. Home crowd will make a lot of noise. The Liberty Center Tigers will go to 5 0 as they defeat the Archibald Blue Streaks tonight. 16 to nothing. We'll take a timeout when we come back. We join down on the field with our Miles Holidays. He'll give out some awards for our dynamic dude, maybe dudes of the game, when we return to WOSN. The Liberty Center Tigers improved to 5 0. More importantly, go to 2 0 in the NWOAL. Big shutout win. 16 0. They blanked the Archibald Blue Streaks. Couple of gentlemen 
big part of that reason are now down on the field with our Miles Holiday. Yeah, Randy, the two blocks of granite on this defense for Liberty Center. Owen Box and Landon Bockelman right here. Uh, start you with Owen right here. Owen, uh, you guys were just absolutely dominant on the defensive line of scrimmage. Uh, what was the thought process, the game plan going forward? Getting to the quarterback, only rushing three. Uh, the game plan, like it's the same every week. Up front, we're, we're big, strong, get there. Be a man, but we're, we're really challenged us is when uh, they kind of they challenged us over the radio when they said that their their line of scrimmage was ready to, was ready to compete with us, and we, we didn't take that very lightly because we knew we were the better uh, in the in up front. All right, over to you, uh, Landon. Um, big sacks tonight, two of them um, coming into this game. Is it something that you saw on film against their offensive line, or you just use your power or your speed? What'd you use? You know, we watch a lot of film and everything, but every week we have the same game plan. Uh, we got to get to the quarterback do our jobs, but honestly, we're not the ones making the play. It's the linebackers and Seth Navarro on the other side. He's really getting us looks to get those sacks, so we owe it to them. You guys also have an offensive formation where you both are on the same side, uh, tackle over formation. How fun is it to play next to him for a while? Uh, it's pretty fun. You know, we get, we, we're pretty big guys, and we get to go out there and kind of toss people around all the time. So, Of the two of you, which one's the strongest? It's pretty equal. It, we go back and forth. I, we, it's, it's equal. I can, you can't say which one's stronger. Uh, coach says you're the stronger. I, no, we're, we're equals. All right. I'm, just because I'm a little bit older, a little bit more knowledgeable, I know how to use it different, but he's just as strong as I am. All right, he's being really gracious, all right? I'll ask you this next one. Of the two of you, who's the better looking? Uh, I don't know. Owen's pretty good looking, but <laughs> I think I got him beat on that one. Nah. All right, two big wins uh, to start the league against Wasion and getting this one over a big rival, Archbold. Uh, how good does it feel to get off to a great start in the league? Uh, it feels great, especially how the league kind of they, they put a second after we beat Archbold in playoffs last year. That kind of pushed our buttons because, I mean, they don't see the work we put in the offseason. I mean, we were, we were down here working our butts off, just everybody really committed, running when coaches told us we could go home, putting extra work in. This team really wants it. This is a very special team. Last question to you, Landon. How far can you guys go this year? Uh, we play week to week, but we're going to go as far as our brothers will take us there. We put in a lot of work. so. All right, congratulations, gentlemen. Our dynamic dudes. I picked these guys, Randy, because they make me look small. I love it. Fellas, congratulations. Good luck moving forward. A yeah, big win for the Liberty Center Tigers. Again, 5-0. and uh, They'll improve to 2-0 and in the NWOAL, as Miles said. A couple of uh, big wins to start league play. We want to thank everyone for uh, making our night here at uh, Liberty Center possible, starting with Caleb Pullman. AD at Liberty Center understands he's got a baby on the way coming uh, in about November. So on top of everything else he does, you add a baby to that. So uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> Can't thank Curtis and Sam enough for their work on the cameras. And, of course, Ken Reeker, our uh, director, making sure everything goes as it should. And, of course, Kelly Getz back at Master Control in Lima. So our final once again, Liberty Center, Blanks Archibald, 16 nothing, 4 miles holiday. And our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.